All right. Uh, so this is email sequencing with Anasio. So what we've built is a way to uh, automate outreach uh, to contacts within your CRM. So some great use cases are for uh, perhaps outreach, you know, re-engagement as part of a sales process. So you've, you've been involved in a sales process with somebody, maybe communication's gone cold, so you want to re-engage them. Uh, reaching out to folks as part of an onboarding sequence. So once folks uh, come on board to your business, you want to be in touch with them to set up an initial onboarding call. Tons of different great use cases there. Um, so the way that you set it up is really similar to a lot of email sequencing tools you might have used in the past, where you can uh, configure a sequence of emails that you want to be sent. So the email editor here is really similar to uh, how you would send emails from Atio, uh, you know, manually one-to-one -one or mass send, where it's a full email editor with the ability to drop in personalization tokens uh, with, you know, being able to set fallback variables, completely customize the message, uh, include links. So I have a, a calendar link for an onboarding call that I dropped in here. And additionally, if you have an email signature set up for your mailbox in Atio, uh, that will be automatically populated. So what I built out here is uh, an initial email touching base saying, hey, we're super excited to have you on board. We'd love to set up an onboarding call. And then I'm waiting five days, so giving them time to respond or book a call uh, before sending a light follow-up email. So when you're building your sequence, you can add as many steps as you'd like and configure how long you want to wait between each step. If I wanted to add another email, I could do so here. One thing to note is that any changes that you make when you are updating your email sequence, it won't affect the current uh, recipients that are enrolled, uh, but it will go into effect for any new recipients uh, that you add to the sequence. Additionally, when you're building these out, if you have email templates you already have set with an Atio, uh, you can take advantage of those. So I'll just go ahead and delete this step here. Uh, and one final note on adding steps, uh, you can add subsequent steps, but by clicking the menu icon in the top right here, uh, I can configure adding a step before or adding a step after or even deleting the step. So with regards to when these emails are sent out, at the beginning of the sequence, you can configure when you want uh, the first email to be sent. So right now I have it set as immediately after enrollment, uh, but I can queue this up so there's a delay of one or multiple business days. On the right-hand side, we can configure the sending window. So, you know, a lot of times you wanna make sure that you're reaching out to a contact at a time that they're likely to see the email and or respond. So what I have set up is given my time zone and given who I'm reaching out to, uh, I've configured a sending window of business hours for New York. And I also have the option selected to send only on business days. Uh, this is super helpful because if we have any delays set up here, uh, rather than you know, a follow-up email being sent on the weekend, this ensures that the follow-up email is gonna be sent uh, the next business day. We also provide the ability to configure the unsubscribe link. Uh, so this is an unsubscribe link is always included to ensure uh, deliverability, uh, but then also to help protect uh, your domain's reputation as well as uh, you know, the infrastructure that we built, that reputation as well. You can change how this unsubscribe link is going to show up. So you have a few different options here and you'll see a preview for how that's gonna be displayed at the bottom of the email. If somebody clicks this link, it's going to unsubscribe from an uh, email sent from this particular sender. So if I enrolled somebody into the sequence and they unsubscribed, uh, then they would be noted as unsubscribing from emails sent from me via sequences. Additionally, you can configure whether or not these follow-up emails are gonna be threaded. Um, I generally find it really helpful to have uh, follow-up emails sent as part of one thread. Uh, but if you wanted to turn that off, you could do so. Lastly, you can configure exit criteria. So 
depending on the nature of the emails that you're sending out, sometimes you're driving towards a response. Um, sometimes you're driving towards a meeting being booked or you know, you're happy with either case uh, occurring. So for me here, you know, I really want to engage with a customer to start the onboarding process, uh, get that touch point. So I would be happy if they booked a meeting with me, uh, but I'd also be happy if they uh, replied to the email so I can start engaging with them uh, directly. So I have uh, configured both of those exit criteria. The way the meeting booked exit criteria works is that when a calendar is a calendar event is booked between uh, the recipient and the sender. So since I have my mailbox uh, synced with Atio, um, if the recipient were to book a meeting with me, that would be logged to my calendar, and then that would flow through to Atio and automatically enroll the recipient from the sequence. Great. So Luke asked a question in the chat. Is there a limit to how many people a sequence email can be sent to? Is there a limit difference for ad hoc sequences versus automation sequences? Um, so there, there's not a limit in terms of the total number of contacts that you can enroll into a sequence. But for deliverability purposes, we do uh, limit sending up to 12 emails from a particular mailbox per hour. So you could enroll 100 contacts from a uh, in a particular sequence at one time, uh, but we are going to queue those and stagger them so that they're sent in a bucket of about 12 per hour. Uh, so delay of about five minutes between each meal. Perfect. So I have already enrolled a few a few contacts into the sequence. So we can check the recipients tab to see who's currently in the sequence, who has exited and what their status is. So for example, for Zev, we can see that he's received the first email and in five business days, he's going to receive the follow-up email as long as he doesn't meet any of the exit criteria that I've filled out. So as long as he doesn't reply to the email or book a meeting with me. Additionally, uh, within this section, you're able to uh, pause an email sequence for particular participants or exit them from the sequence. Um, so this gives you full control as to uh, whether or not somebody is going to continue in a particular sequence. Additionally, if I were to turn off the sequence, I have the ability to uh, exit the active recipients at that time. At the bottom here, we can see some insights with regards to uh, how many folks are in the sequence, how many have been enrolled in total, and then how many have exited from the sequence. Uh, so the, the exits can be because the sequence ended. Um, it could be because they've met certain exit criteria. Uh, but this will give you helpful insights into kind of the overall volume that you're, you're sending through these sequences. With regards to settings, uh, so any team member can use this particular sequence to send emails, um, but you can also uh, provide access to delegated sending. So what this means is that if I have this turned on, um, other workspace members can enroll participants or recipients on my behalf, uh, which can be helpful if say, for example, you are setting up an outreach sequence for your CEO, you're building the sequence and you want those emails to be delivered by your CEO, um, but you, you don't wanna require a bunch of work from them in terms of manually enrolling people, you wanna take care of that process for them. So by uh, adding them in here and then approving delegated sending, you can send those emails on their behalf. Additionally, by turning this on, it allows workflow automations to automatically enroll people into the sequence. So first I'm gonna cover manual enrollment and what that looks like, and then I'll step into what automated enrollment looks like. So right from a sequence, I can enroll participants and I'm just going to, I'm gonna enroll myself into the sequence. Perfect. 
So you can manually enroll uh, one or a series of participants uh, into the sequence. Additionally, if I were to try to enroll myself again, it's going to show that I'm already in the sequence. Uh, so we prevent you accidentally enrolling somebody multiple times, which is a helpful uh, guardrail there. Just go ahead and exit myself here. Now I can enroll from directly from the sequence. Um, I can also enroll from uh, a list of people records. So I could select everybody here and enroll them into, can enroll up to 50 at a time. So I can enroll if I just select, deselect a few here. I can enroll uh, those particular contacts into the onboarding sequence. Uh, and I can also see the full sequence here. Uh, I'm not gonna enroll these folks at this time because I don't, don't want to spam them with my uh, test sequence. Um, but again, you can enroll from a list of, of contacts. You can also go to a particular record and enroll a contact directly there. Now, the last way that you can enroll people into a sequence is uh, in an automated fashion via workflow. So this can be really cool if you have certain criteria in mind for when somebody should you know, receive out a certain type of outreach from you. So the use case that we're rolling with here is the onboarding uh, use case. So I have a customer success list and when a company is added to the customer success list, we are going to enroll the main point of contact uh, into the sequence, and it's going to be sent by the primary CSM. So to show this in action, we're gonna to go to our customer success list. I'm gonna add in ATIO, and I have myself set as a primary CSM. I'll skip these attributes for now and just set the main point of contact to be myself again. And I'm gonna add add to, to the onboarding stage. Now, if we go back to our workflow, we can see that the workflow has run. So it's been triggered by uh, the company being added to the list and then the sequence enrollment has executed. Now, if we go to our sequences, and click into our onboarding sequence, we can see that uh, we're currently queuing up a send uh, for uh, this onboarding sequence. So again, you can do manual enrollments uh, from a list. It's gonna be up to 50 records at a time. Um, and all of that is gonna be queued so that we're sending a maximum of 12 uh, emails per hour from a particular mailbox. And then you also have the ability to set up a fully automated process where if certain criteria is met, whether it's a company is added to a list, whether an attribute is changed on, on a company or on a person, uh, that can automatically enroll them into a particular email sequence. So you know, that is, that's pretty much it. It's, it's a really helpful tool to automate outreach, automate follow-up, um, you can set it up manually. You can um, automatically enroll participants. Uh, and it's a way to keep in touch, uh, you know, in a way that makes sense with, with contacts within your CRM. So I'm going to pause here and wrap things up. Uh, but as a reminder, if you click help and first steps in the bottom left, uh, you can always access articles within our help center. We've actually built out, so actually navigate to that right now. We've actually built out a bunch of great documentation within our help center with regards to creating a sequence, managing sequences, you know, everything included uh, with the sequences tool. But if you review that material or you just want to chat with somebody about the tool or questions that you have, you can always click into our support chat and then send a message to the team. All right. Really appreciate uh, everybody's time today uh, and excited to see what you built. Cheers, folks.